In the last few videos in the series, we've been talking about how you can take any date in history and convert it to what day of the week that calendar date fell on. We've already explained the algorithm in some previous videos. We've already talked about how to find day codes and month codes. And now we're at probably the most complicated part of, of the algorithm, which is computing the year code. So this video is going to be a little bit longer, but we'll try to make this as easy as we can to follow. So um, here's the good news first. Um, uh, you might be concerned about having to memorize a whole spectrum of years from the 1700s to the 1800s and 1900s, maybe different algorithms for all those centuries. The good thing is, is you can start with one century and then it's easy to convert between the centuries. So in this video, we're going to talk about just the 2000s. Now, if you want to find dates in history like the 1900s or the 1800s, there's an easy conversion you can do that we'll cover in the next video. So for now, all of these years will just be in the 2000s. So we're going to use that as kind of our, our home base. I've got a little bit more good news. You actually don't have to compute the year codes for all um, 100 years from 2000 to 299. Um, the year codes repeat themselves every 28 years. Basically what happens is every year if you had a, a, a calendar date that fell on a Monday, under normal circumstances the uh, date that following year would be a Tuesday. It increments by one year. Um, so you would think that every seven years the year codes would repeat, but because of the leap years being every four years, four times seven, you get 28. So the year codes are going to repeat every 28 years. So what we can do is we can take our year modulo 28. And what that means is you'll either subtract nothing if it's already 2000 to 2027, so to speak. Um, or if it's above that, you would subtract 28. If it's much higher than that, you might have to subtract 56 or two multiples of 28 or 84, which is three multiples of 28. So let's let's try a couple. Um, if you're going to compute the year code for uh, 2020, then you would just do that year code because we're, we're actually going to look at that range uh, from zero up to 28. But if you're going to try to compute the year code for 20. 35, 2035, you wouldn't actually have to compute that year code. You would have to compute the year code for uh, 2007 because you would subtract 28 years. And this is in our smaller window of only 28 years. Uh, let's do two more. If you're going to do the year code or try to do the year code for uh, 2087, you know, really far in the future. Well, you would take that modulo 28 and subtract out multiples of 28, but let's not do 28 at a time. Matter of fact, we can do more than 56. We can take out 84 at a time. And obviously that would be the equivalent year code to 2003, of course, right? Um, you can use little algebra tricks to help with subtracting 28 and 56 and 84. I won't go into too much detail because sometimes that algebra could be a little cumbersome in your head if you're trying to do this for a trick or on the fly. Uh, some people, if you're not um, super proficient at doing large subtraction in your head, um, when you do something, let's say like minus 56, you can actually add 4 and then subtract 60. And those two steps are usually easier than this one complicated step. Um, so, uh, same thing with 84, you could add 6 and subtract 90. So like, um, let's, let's take this uh, 35 here. If we wanted to subtract 28, you could add 2, would it be 37, minus 30 is 2007. Some people can do that a little bit faster in their heads than subtracting these cumbersome. Uh, numbers here. So that so good news. So we only have to look from 2000 to 2028. Anything above that will drop back into that range there. So that's good news. All right. So let's look at 2000 to 2028. Um, you might be concerned about the leap years. Uh, believe it or not, the leap years are actually good things because the leap years are actually our markers for how we're going to compute the whole spectrum of years. So let's actually start with the leap years and you'll see how this is actually a benefit to us in, in just a little bit. 2000 was a leap year, 
so was 2004, 2008, and every multiple of um, every additional four years beyond that, of course. Uh, leap years obviously happen every four years. So let's go through these. Um, out of the memorization you have to do, this is the only thing you really ultimately have to memorize as far as years go. So um, some of these don't appear for any rhyme or reason, but um, this, this is where we're going to start. I'll give you the code, and then I'll also give you a little mnemonic for how most people remember these year codes here. So the year 2000's code is zero. And I actually, uh, just so I don't have to switch colors back and forth, let me just write all the year codes and then I'll do the mnemonics. So um, the year code for 2000 is zero, for 2004 is five, 2008 is three. Don't worry if these look crazy, um, Don't just bear with me. Um, there, there's easy ways to remember these. 2012 is 1, 2016 is 6, 2020 is 4, 2024 is 2, and 2028, modulo 28, if you take the year 28 and subtract out 28, it will drop you back to the year 2000, which is 0 again. Now those look wild and crazy. Uh, why or how on earth are you supposed to remember these? Let's, let's give a few mnemonics. Um, 2000 is zero, uh, that's, pr that's pretty easy. I don't even think we need a mnemonic for that one. It's just the last digit is zero. Um, let me actually skip down. I actually wanna show you a shortcut here. Let's actually look at 2012 and 2024 next. Um, when you take the 12 and divide it by 12, 12 over 12, you get one. Uh, 24, you take 24 divided by 12, you get two. That pattern can actually be extended all the way out. So 36 uh, is th 2036 would be three, 2048 would be four, 2056 would be, uh, 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 let's see, 3648. I'm sorry, I got my numbers mixed up. 60 would be five, 72 would be six, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and 2084 would be seven, um, but then seven modulo uh, seven would be zero, so it's just like backing up to the number zero. We saw that one. So that one is a little shortcut. You don't have to use that shortcut, but if you just happen to land on uh, 2060, you could just say five without dropping it back multiples of, of 28. So that's a, a neat little shortcut. Okay, now let's fill in the rest. 2004 is five. Um, that's maybe not a great mnemonic, but five comes after four, 2004, four, then five. Um, the eight, uh, here's a nice little memory tool for the eight. Uh, if you take a, if you take a number eight and slice it, half of it looks like a three. It's like half of an eight. So you see 2008, you get a three. Um, 2016 ends in a six. So your code is six. Um, 2020, um, two plus zero plus two plus zero. If you add up the digits in, in the actual year, um, and, and please obviously no, there's no mathematics behind these mnemonics. They're simply mnemonics just to help you remember the year codes. And then uh, 2028, modulo 28 would be back equivalent to zero again. So anyways, um, that's the year codes for the leap years. And we'll practice some in just a minute. All right now, what about the years other than leap years? Obviously, there's a lot of years that aren't 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, etc. So here's here's what you do for that. First off, you take your year in the 2000s, whatever it may be, small number, big number, whatever. Take it modulo 28 to drop it back in that small window from zero to 27, actually. Then what you're going to do is you're going to find the year code of the immediately preceding leap year. So if it, you know your year is 2013, the leap year that comes before that most closely is 2012. So you would find the year code for 2012. If you remember on the last page, that was equal to one. And then you're gonna add how many additional years there is until you get to your year. So uh, let's do, actually let's, let's jot this one down. So if you had uh, 2013, then you're going to look at the year code for 2012, the immediately preceding uh, leap year. Year code was one. And then you're going to add one extra year to get to 2013. So 2013's year code is two. 
uh, let's do one more. Uh, what if you're trying to find, um, let's say, 2022, 2022? Well, the immediately preceding leap year would be 2020, whose year code was four. If you remember, that's the one where you add up the digits and you get four. Uh, this is two years after that, so plus two, and you would get a six. Right, so that's it. That's what you do for all the years other than leap years. Okay, so let's um let's stop for a moment and uh, let's let's try let's try a whole bunch. Let's see if we can find all these guys' year codes. I've picked them to the whole spectrum of uh, of numbers here. So let's let's do this here. Two thousand eight. Let's see. Two thousand eight is already in our smaller window, zero to twenty seven, um, and so we just find this leap year. 2008 happens to be, uh, I'm sorry, find this year code. 2008 happens to be a leap year. So there's no adjustment necessary. So I think through my mnemonic devices, 2008, eight was the one where we split it in half and got the three. So his year code is three. All right, a little bit tougher. What about 2017? Still zero to 27, but uh, what's his year code? It's not a leap year. So what's the last leap year multiple of four, zero, four, eight, 12, 16, et cetera, um, before 2017? I think it's 2016. So the year code for 2016 was six. There's one extra year to get to, to 2017. So you get seven. And I didn't talk about this earlier, but you can actually take this final answer modulo seven as well, like we did with the day codes, et cetera. Um, so that'll be equivalent to zero. Okay, you can drop your final answer down modulo seven. 2036, there's two ways to do this one that are both correct. Let's try it the standard way first. It's beyond 2027, so we're gonna take it mod modulo 28, so we're gonna drop it down 28. Um, this is eight years beyond um, uh, 2000. Uh, 28, so this would be equivalent to 2008. All right, so finding his year code would be equivalent to finding his year code. This was a leap year, so your um, your answer for 2008 would be three. Now, there's another way to do this one. Do you remember the shortcut I showed you? 2012, 2024, 36, 48, 60, 72, etc. The multiples of 12. 36 divided by 12 gives you three. So that's a, a little shortcut for this one. If it was 2037, you couldn't have done that. Um, big one, last one, 2092, 2092, goodness gracious. So that's way down the line. So we've got to subtract out a bunch of multiples of 28. Really, we just have to subtract out 84 because that's a, a large multiple of 28. The You could do it um, and just no, notice that it's eight, but um, let's try to do it another way. Um, subtracting 84 would be like adding six and subtracting 90. Adding six and subtracting 90, that's the same as subtracting 84. So 92 and six make 98, minus 90 gives you eight. So this would be equivalent to 2008. Uh, if you can do quick subtraction in your head, you could just subtract 84 and get 8 that way too. Uh, anyways, we've already done this one coincidentally two other times. This year code is obviously 3. So that's how you get all the year codes in the 2000s. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about how to do other centuries, the 1900s, the 1800s, um, uh, the 22nd century, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's, let's finish this video with a, a full blown example. So, so if you can do this one, you've really got the, the idea of the algorithm and we just have some details to wrap up. Okay. Um, June 25th, 2088 June 25th 2088 what a lot of people do if they're doing this trick for somebody like in a live setting or whatever because the year codes the toughest the a lot of people will ask for the year code first to do that one and then when they get the month and the day bam they've got their answer because it's a lot easier obviously to do the month and the day so let's do that so we'll do the year code first 2088 
um, is way bigger than 28, so we'll subtract out 84, so we get 2004. So this year code's equivalent to 2004, which year code is five, if you look back at the, the previous chart. Because uh, remember the mnemonic four, five, that was our, our mnemonic for that one. Um, June 25th, June's month code um, is three. Remember our mnemonic June bug from the earlier video? Bug has three letters. The 25th, so you take out multiples of seven on a calendar. Every uh, seven days you wind up back on the same count, um, day of the week anyways. So subtract out 21, which is a multiple of seven, you get four. Um, add these up. 3 and 4 make 7, 7 and 5 make 12, modulo 7, because you can take this down, modulo 7 will give you 5, and 5 was on a Friday. So you can test me on this, but I think June 25th, 2088 in the future will be on a Friday. Um, notice you can take this down, knock it down, modulo 7 as you go. When I added three and four and got seven, in my mind, I just went ahead and dropped those anyway. So any time you get sevens, you can just drop them out even before you do the addition. Okay, um, one last thing I wanna mention in this year code uh, video, I almost forgot this. There's a, a squirrely little um, exception to the leap year rule. Um, the any year that ends in a zero zero like 2000 or 1900 or 1800 or, or whatever this is only a leap year only a leap year um, if you can divide it evenly by 400 okay so 2000 is a leap year because you can divide it by 400 1900 that specific year was not a leap year because it's not divisible by 400 um, uh, so 1600 would be a leap year 1700 is not a leap year so just remember this kind of squirrely exception um, it's rare I mean you you know the, the chances of having a year like this are, are not that common but it needs to be said so anyway remember that squirrely little little exception so now we're basically done we're almost done the only thing we need to do now is talk about how you move between the centuries and then you could do June 25th 1788 with a small little adjustment and you're done